Hi, this is Ruben Lerner, and welcome back to my Python Standard Library Video Explainer series. This time I'm doing something a little odd and different. So there is a string module, import string. And in a previous video, I showed you that string has all these um, uh, strings defined, for lack of a better term, string, ASCII, lowercase, and so forth, that we can use for searching. I use it every so often when I need strings. But string also includes a class. It includes the string.formatter class. Now you are very, very unlikely to actually use the string formatter class on your own, but this is the core, as far as I can tell, of how things like fstrings and the str.format method are actually implemented. So what I wanna do is just look at a little, little bit of this formatter class. Now, in theory, it says in the documentation, the built-in string class provides the ability to do complex variable substitutions and value formatting with format. The formatter class in the string modules, that's what we're looking at now, allows you to create and customize your own string formatting behaviors using the same implementation as the built-in format method. Meaning, if you want to do special, crazy, new, different kinds of string formatters, this formatter method is there for you. Now, how likely are you to want to do that? I'd say, especially in the era of f-strings, really, really unlikely. Moreover, you can, of course, create a dunder format method in classes that you write so that your objects will be integrated or interpolated or stringified into format strings or f-strings pretty naturally. So I'm not going to show you how to subclass the formatter class because I can't imagine a situation in which I'd want to do that. But I think it is kind of interesting to see the formatter class and how it works and what we can do with it, at least a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say here f equals string.formatter. And now I have a new formatter object. And if I say, hey, what is f? It'll say, oh, yeah, it's an instance of string formatter. OK, so so far, it hasn't done much for me. But what if I do this? What if I say x equals 100 and y equals 10, 20, 30? And z is going to be equal to a1, uh, you know, b2, c3. So now I have three variables defined. OK, and now I'm going to want to format these strings. How am I going to do that? Well, we know that I can say something like, you know, f string of x equals x and y equals y and z equals z. And if I do that, then I get back a string in which we have x is 100, y is 10, 20, 30, and z is the dictionary there. So far, so good. I can also do this sort of older style if I take a string and then here I'll use positional. So I'll say 0, 1, and 2. Oops, 2. And then I'll say format of x, y, and z. Right, and so the format method and f strings are basically doing the same thing here. There are some mild differences, but we're not going to get into that right now. All right, so how does the formatter get involved here? Well, I'm going to take my original string here, and I'm going to put that into a variable s, s equals that. So now I have s, x, y, and z. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to say f dot format of x, y, and z. And now, oops, sorry, uh, x, y, and z. And now I got exactly the same thing. So you can see, basically, that the format string method is basically doing this, f.format of, right? It's got doing a little switcheroo there in terms of what is the instance and what is the class and so forth. OK, so, you know, mildly interesting, perhaps, but not, like, overwhelming. The thing is, there are at least two different stages here in the creation of our format string, or when we do this. One is parsing the string, right? I always describe it as, Python looks at the string, or in the format method particularly, format sort of looks to its left and looks for curly braces with numbers in it. And then it knows, aha, this is a place in which I have to actually interpolate something. What am I going to interpolate? Now I look to my right, and I get the you know, appropriate items. But we can actually split up these segments. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say f.parse of s. And that's going to be back a formatter iterator. OK, well, not so exciting. Well, if it's an iterator, then I can put it in a for loop, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say for one item in f.parse s, print one item. Now let's see what we get. Well, you can see that what we're getting is basically a bunch of tuples. And each tuple contains, um, now let me just double check this in the documentation here, because it's not always super obvious. It's four different things. It is the literal text. So this is the string that we passed, right? So we have x equals curly braces zero. So it's going to break that up. It's going to say x equals. And then it's going to get rid of the curly braces and replace those with, well, another element of the tuple. So x equals, then 0. And notice it turns these into strings, so they're no longer integers, which I find interesting. And then we have nothing here, an empty string here. And then we have none. 
So the last two are the format spec and the conversion. Now the conversion, I'm not too worried about. Um, it's generally gonna be none. I think you can do some automatic conversion there. I'm not too, too convinced about that. But where it does get sort of interesting to me is if we're gonna change our string a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna just copy and paste all this stuff here. So you'll be able to see it in the Jupyter Notebook, of course, that I upload to GitHub. So now what do I have? Now I have my string and I format exactly the same as before, but now I'm gonna change a little bit. I'm gonna say zero colon uh, five and then one colon three. Let's do this ABC. Now it might give me an error here. And sure enough, it gave me an error, right? It doesn't know what to do there with that sort of format. Un unsupported format string so, uh, proposed a list there. Okay, so fine, I was getting a little carried away. Let's just stick with the five then. So look what happens. Now this five, this formatting string, the format spec, has been added to the tuple. So what you can imagine is now, right, so f.parse, why does it give us an iterator? Because it's gonna iterate over the string. It's gonna look for text followed by curly braces. And when it hits the end of the curly braces, it stops, turns everything it's gotten until they're into a tuple. What's it gonna do with it? Well, it's gonna say, this is a string. This is, right, the stuff before the colon is gonna be this number. The stuff after the colon is gonna be the format specifier in here. Well, you know, we have nothing. What if I do it the sort of longer way? What if I do it with uh, KWRs? So here I'm going to say A, well, no, I don't want to do that. I want to say A and B and C. And now, let's see if this works. Now I'm going to say here A equals X and B equals Y and C equals Z. And now look what happens there. I get X equals A and Y equals B and Z equals C. Also notice, right, the commas there. I guess I didn't notice this before or didn't mention it before. But the comma, because it's the string starting after the last curly brace until the end of the next curly brace, right, that's all considered to be the string. So this is how Python is breaking our strings apart and then doing stuff with it. And you'll notice also that there's a clear separation between what's before the colon and what's after the colon. And this allows objects to, well, do all sorts of things with various specifiers. Okay, well, wait a second. What else can we do here? All right, and here I'm gonna try to do some experimental stuff. There's also a get field method. So if I say here f.getField. So how is that going to work? Well, we've already created our formatter object, right? And when I did it over there, I said, uh, you know, f equals a formatter, right? Just up here. So I'm going to say now f.getField, I'm going to say a. And it's going to say, wait a second, you need to provide me actually with args and kwrgs. So this is where things get like a little, a little weird where I need to provide it with the sort of the inputs. So what if I provide it here with, uh, let's do this. I'm gonna say here, you know, one, two, three, and let's do this then, A1, B2, C3. And look at that. I am gonna get back the value one for the field specifier A. And if I give the same thing here for B, it's gonna give me two and B, I'm gonna get back a tuple. So this allows us to see also how Python is retrieving things. Now, by the way, what if I give it a number? What if I give it here a zero? Aha, you see, so that's how we can distinguish between args and kwrgs, right? That's why when you do a, when you do stir.format, you can provide things with args, you can also provide things with kwrgs, and there's no way to mix them up. And you might be saying, wait a second, what if the kwrgs has a number there, right? What if our dictionary looks like zero and one and two? Actually, I'll do it with like you know, 10 and 20 and 30. And now I ask for field 10. Will that work? No, it won't work. And the reason is that basically it gets confused here. You can't really use numbers or even strings as numbers. Oh, actually, yeah, let's try this even. Right? If I try it with integers here, it's still going to get equally confused. It might give me a slightly different error. No, it's giving me the same error. It's going to say your tuple index out of range. The moment that you're giving it something that can be turned into a number, that's is digit in Python parlance, it says, oh, I see, I'll turn to a number and I'll grab it from here. But there is nothing to be grabbed from there. So basically, Python is sort of trying to outsmart us a little bit. And as usual, you know, it's, it's, actually, uh, um, you know, it's actually doing the right thing. So again, this is not going to be day-to-day -day useful in your formatting of strings, but it does, I hope, give you a better pre appreciation for how Python does this and the sort of different parts that are there when you do formatting of strings. All right, that's it for this time on the Video Explainer. Um, hope you enjoy this. Please give me feedback. And if you enjoy these explanations, you will really enjoy my free weekly Better Developers mailing list. The link is in the notes right under this video. Thanks a lot, and I will be back soon with another explanation.